Governor Bashir, my fellow legislators and organizers, and honored guests. I am proud to stand with you today as we commemorate this historic moment in our country's history. It means so much to me that we are holding this march here in our capital city, the community where I grew up and now serve in the Kentucky House of Representatives. I want to thank Senator Gerald Neal for his efforts to bring this march together, and I deeply appreciate those who worked so hard to make it happen. That includes our state and local chapters of the NAACP, our state government, our local government, our church leaders, our educators, our labor unions, KSU, and all other organizations that are on the front lines advocating for true equality wherever inequality exists. I was a small child, six years of age, and in the first grade when the Selma March was held. So I don't have a first-hand memory of what all took place 55 years ago. I also have some memory of the march that happened here in Frankfurt a year earlier when the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Jackie Robinson and our own Georgia Powers. A 10,000, let's give a shout out to Senator Powers. And 10,000 others walked the same road that we just walked today. And while I have little direct memory of these high points in the civil rights struggle, I will never forget the impact they have had in the years that have followed. My life and the lives of my family and so many friends were made better by their actions and by their sacrifices. The same holds true for my children and the future generations that will follow. Five years ago on the 50th anniversary of Selma to Montgomery March, President Barack Obama stood in the front of the Edmund Pettus Bridge and talked about those who were there so many years before. They were not physically imposing, he said, but they gave courage to me. They held no elected office, he said, but they led a nation. They didn't seek special treatment, the president said, just the equal treatment promised to them almost a century ago. That is all we have ever asked for, that we live up to the words of our United States Constitution, which defines that all men and all women are created equal. It is such a simple request, but countless lives have been lost trying to make it a re reality. To some, the march from Selma may seem like an ancient history. That is that's its lesson are no longer relevant because of the progress that we have made since then. As most of you know who are from Frankfurt, I am a retired history teacher. So I know what happens when we forget our history or think it has little bearing on our lives today. The fact is, you don't have to look far to see that echoes from that era are still very much with us today. Those echoes can be found in efforts to keep people from voting. Those echoes can be found in efforts to dehumanize those who do not talk, walk, or look like us. And those echoes can be found in the dark corners of social media, where those driven by hatred attempt to shut down anyone who fights for what is right and fair. Many of those heroes who crossed the bridge 55 years ago are no longer with us but their legacies live on in people like you who have picked up the baton and marched it further down the road past Montgomery and past Washington, D.C. and into the hearts of so many who believe our country is, is a better place when equality is more than a word on a page. That's right. So in ending, let me thank you again for being here, for breathing new life into such a powerful moment in our history. And people like you and me, more than ever, must continue to pursue, fight, and stand up in defending and protecting the human rights and the civil rights for all people in this Commonwealth and in these United States of America. Thank you.